Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay welcome again so uh, we were discussing our principle number 3 rational people think at margin okay so that we have clarified using an airlines example if you can remember right so that kind of uh, thing uh, there is an apparent what should i say paradox in real life sometimes it is called what are diamond paradox what are diamond paradox okay so they are also with this example also you will realize that how this principle number 3 rational people think at margin uh, that has uh, important role okay see uh, water and diamond two commodities you are taking here right and you can understand that water is extremely necessary or uh, precious commodities for our sustenance right it is an essential commodity right so its its utility or its uh, utilization in our daily life is uh, enormous vis a vis diamond almost no that much utility or it's not an essential commodity for our uh, sustenance right but if you real life if you see that price uh, in at least in india price of water is very uh, negligible or very cheap water is very cheap vis a vis diamond is very expensive Okay. So, apparently it is a paradox because one commodity it is paradox because one commodity is so much of useful uh, useful for our daily life, but its price is very less. Vis a vis another commodity is not that much useful uh, perhaps uh, negligible kind of usefulness it has in our daily life, but its price is huge. Uh, so, apparently it is a paradoxical kind of thing. So, why? if we try to understand that why then you will realize that this marginal principle is there because uh, water is plenty it is not that much scarce like diamond right. So, people are willing to pay very less amount for additional quantity of water at the margin. So, margin at the margin for margin means for one unit of additional quantity of that goods how much I am willing to pay okay, and that is the price right. So, people are willing to pay very less for additional uh, one extra gallon of water or something like that right. Besides diamond is very scarce ok, uh, very scarce and that is why although it does not have almost or almost no use in our daily life, but since it is very scarce right, people are willing to pay huge amount of money for that. Okay. So, that is why although it is not that, that much useful at all in our daily life, okay, but people are willing to pay uh, many more for that. So, uh, this uh, at the margin what is the benefit you are earning by, by occupying or by utilizing that, uh, that commodity vis a vis. So, that is called marginal benefit and whatever you are willing to sacrifice for that commodity that is called marginal cost. So, in our decision making at every life, so if I am a rational person, okay, it should be uh, we should compare between marginal benefit and marginal cost and if marginal benefit is more than marginal cost or marginal benefit exceeds marginal cost, we should take decision in favor of that or we should purchase that commodity. Okay. So, that is the rational people think at margin. Okay. Then uh, our fourth principle that is uh, called uh, people respond to incentives. So, let me clarify what is this. Uh, say suppose something happened in real life, you will realize that people all the economic agents like me, you, whoever else are there in this society, they will respond if something, some change happens vis a vis something what was there earlier. I will give an example, you will understand. Not only that people will, people will respond to that, that thing that changes, different group of people may respond differently. Suppose for some reason 
apple price suddenly yesterday it was uh, 100 rupee per kg today it is 200 rupee per kg okay so apple price increases okay look at here at least with that particular commodity apple okay two groups of people are there who are interacting with that commodity one group i can tell seller or grower of that apple another group a consumer purchaser of that apple who are purchasing from the market so if apple price increases for some reason right you know immediately that people who are consumer who are purchasing apple from the market for their consumption purpose they will try to consume little bit less okay because its price has increased and you don't have uh, unlimited amount of money in your pocket because again you have to face trade off some limited amount of money is there in your pocket and with that money you have to allocate or you have to maintain your entire family some food items some clothing items shelter and all whatever whatever we need for our, uh, our for our subsistence right so so definitely as a consumer i will try to purchase probably little bit less amount of apple because its price is increased okay now look at the so consumers will try to purchase less look at the situation the people who are growing apple right producers of apple what they will do since apple price has increased they will perhaps try to produce more because that will uh, give them uh, more income right so any kinds of changes whatever happens in real life okay people immediately adjust their behavior accordingly and that adjustment we are telling response people respond this respond quote unquote term respond uh, by that we are referring that adjustment of the people's behavior and whatever the change is happening that we are telling as incentive okay okay we can sometimes see uh, what is the usefulness of this course this economics perhaps after after down the line after few years uh, some of you people will be uh, the policy makers of the government right so when government is going to take some some policies some economic policies right you have to be very careful you have to uh, bring the advisor to the government you have to keep in your mind all the alternative possibilities that can appear right we will give an example why i am telling that okay so that your policy what you will recommend to the government that will be more informative more judicious kind of thing look at one example say there is a study in us in 1960s or 1970s there is a study so these days in highway driving uh, wearing the seat belt is the mandatory thing right but those days it was not okay now when you are driving a car four wheeler right uh, putting up your seat belt was not mandatory those days. So, what is happening lot of accident, accidents is inevitable in the highways right some accidents are happening. So, and with all those most of the accidents no um, for the drivers they are uh, getting killed ok. So, for the precaution of the drivers and all other passengers right. So, in US there is a law came into the existence in 1960s or 70s sometimes back. Okay. So, wearing seat belt is a mandatory thing. So, so, that is a new law came that incentivize people in different way. What happens? When policy makers bring that law into the picture, what was the target? Target is to save the life of the drivers or life of the travelers in that passenger car. right? What happens? When seat belt is mandatory, now look at the perspective from the drivers driver is thinking that uh, even if accidents now occurs the possibility of getting more hurt when i am not putting seat belt and vis a vis when i am putting seat belt now getting hurt is less possible right so this law is actually making rush driving more okay as a result what is happened number of accidents increases okay number of uh, death of the drivers or that car drivers it it improves or it came down little bit uh, but not significantly it came down because number of accidents increases right and number of pedestrian death, uh, death has increased a huge amount because lot of accidents are happening now okay so look at here why i am telling this uh, this uh, what kind of uh, different uh, ways associated stakeholders can behave can respond 
vis a vis one policies when uh, some policy makers are taking right you have to be very careful when you are going to give that policy advice to the government to be implemented right so this is the one thing one way something was in the focus target in the mind of the policy makers and something completely something else is happening okay exactly same thing can happen i don't know whether that happens or not see suppose in a voluntary retirement scheme vrs many of you perhaps heard about this terminology so in a government organization okay if say uh, in a in a government office so whatever amount of uh, works are there okay vis a vis number of workers or number of employees are required support uh, 10 employees are required in an office and actually 12 employees are already employed for some reason right so government wants to cut down that uh, number of employees to and to bring it to 10 right so one respectable way to give the vrs voluntary retirement scheme okay that offer to the employees people who are willing they can take their reti retirement benefit and they can voluntarily retire from their job okay so obviously government may have or policy makers may have this kind of objective in their mind that with this kind of offer to all the employees perhaps who are the less efficient employees who don't want to work that much right they will take vrs okay and they will go but what can happen no who are the more efficient people they can take vrs because they will get all the retirement benefits and all and they can try to find out some job in the maybe corporate sector right so when government is going to uh, offer this vrs scheme okay or when you being the policy makers or policy advisors to the government you are recommending government to take that vrs scheme okay or, or offer that vrs scheme to the employees right you have to keep in your mind all those possibilities right if you keep only in your mind that with this proposal i think only inefficient people will take vrs and go out of the system you are completely wrong you may be completely wrong right yes some inefficient people also can take right so all the phenomena okay what could be there different stakeholders may respond differently against this kind of incentivizing kind of scheme the scheme what you are uh, you are launching right so when you are so essential crux or essential message of this thing is that uh, when you are going to take a decision making or some uh, policy changes right you are going to take right you have to be very judicious you have to keep in your mind all possible uh, options okay how people or how different stakeholders can respond Okay, and accordingly you have to take or you have to choose the best possible policies to be offered right so that we are telling that uh, people people respond since we already learned that people respond to different sorts of um, uh, incentives and people different group of people responds differently like uh, like uh, apple growers and apple consumers kind of example like seed belt kind of example like uh, voluntary retirement scheme kind of example so alternative all sort of alternative kinds of response you have to keep in your mind and accordingly you have to propose the best one okay so now uh, the four principles let us summarize those four principles if you realize if you uh, critically look into these four principles right these are basically about one individual decision making thing one person okay, or one household or one farm when he or she or that organization when they are going to take a decision making given the surrounding given the perspective within which they belong right how they behave so this four principle what we have discussed until now these four principles we can uh, think of as the how individual persons decision making is guided by this four principle now we will uh, discuss six we told that total 10 principles are there so four principles we have completed now principle number 5 okay trade can make each party better off each party better off okay 
So, now you understand. So, next three principles what we will discuss you will realize that these three principles are basically how two different individuals or two different group of individuals are uh, interact among themselves are interacting among themselves are, are, uh, they interact among themselves. Okay. So, first the trade can be so when we are bringing trade it is basically exchange in a market right. So, you know that trade when it happens between it is between two parties right it trade may be with a good or with some service or whatever it is it is one seller is there one buyer is there. Okay. So, this principle is telling that if two parties involve into trade that will be beneficial to both the parties right uh, we will we'll, we'll, we'll bring a specific kind of uh, example okay, with the trade how it can make both parties better off. Okay. Uh, very very crude example what I give those uh, say you are going to the market okay you are purchasing a pen by 10 rupee okay so you are you are giving the 10 rupee to the seller and you are collecting that pen from the seller right uh, can we think of that it is beneficial for both of us definitely from the seller's perspective look at when he is selling that pen by 10 rupee to you definitely cost of production of that pen to that seller uh, may be at most 10 rupee either 10 rupee or less than that okay, because he is getting some profit margin also perhaps its cost of production is 9 rupee. Okay, so, he is getting 1 rupee uh, profit on that one pen. Right. So, by selling that pen in 10 rupees to you he is getting something he is getting some benefit. right? Now, the question is what kind of benefit you are getting as a consumer or as a purchaser of that sale and that pen. Right? When you are paying 10 rupee to that seller to get that pen definitely the valuation of that pen is more than 10 rupee to you usually we do not uh, think in that way what is the valuation of a pen what we I am purchasing from the market I am sure if we could quantify because one pen has some utility to me I, I can write using that right you can write using that. Right. So, that kind of utility whatever you are getting by procuring that pen if somehow we can quantify perhaps that utility is more than 10 rupee okay, or at least 10 rupee otherwise you will not be willing to sacrifice 10 rupee to get that pen for sure. Okay. So, with this example you are you are getting a notion that perhaps in that participating in that transaction that pen transaction right. Uh, both the parties are getting better off. Okay. But let us take a specific example to understand this a little bit uh, better way or more clarificatory way how trade can make each party better off. Okay. Here let us bring here a story of two countries with two commodities. Okay. So, two countries are there this side say uh, England and Portugal and two commodities say wine and cloth. Okay. Suppose whatever resources each of these two countries England and Portugal has okay, using that resources if England can employ its entire resource to uh, production of wine it can produce only 2 units of wine whatever unit it is okay, 2 units of wine. Okay. Alternatively if England can utilize its entire resources to only cloth production it, it can produce 12 units of cloth product cloth. Okay. Look England cannot produce 2 units of wine and 12 units of cloth simultaneously no either 2 units of cloth. Uh, 2 units of wine or 12 units of cloth or maybe a combination of wine and cloth if it allocates its resources accordingly some amount of resources into the production of wine and remaining resources into production of cloth and so on. Okay. And suppose for the Portugal case the situation is exactly opposite using whatever its resources has Portugal has if it uh, employs entirely uh, to production of wine it can produce 12 units of wine alternatively it can produce 2 units of cloth. Right. So, look at here Portugal has some advantage of wine production over England 
and England has some advantage of cloth production over Portugal. Okay. So, Portugal can produce more amount of wine and England can produce more amount of cloth if they specialize only in or Portugal specialize itself only in wine production and England specialize itself only in cloth production. By specializing, specialize, by specializing what we are referring? Although both the commodities they can produce, they are concentrating on production of only one commodity, one of them. Like Portugal is in, in uh, wine and England is in cloth. Okay. So, if they do not participate in trade, so this kind of advantage it is called absolute advantage. Absolute advantage. Okay, and this concept is first given by uh, Adam Smith, one economist, he is known as father of economics also, Adam Smith. Okay, so, Adam Smith first gave this how trade on the basis of principle of ad absolute advantage can make each party better off. Okay, so, let us discuss that Adam Smith's principle of adva absolute advantage and how by engaging into trade both Portugal and England can be better off okay, in this kind of situation. So, if we draw the production possibility frontier of Portugal and England, suppose we are measuring wine this side and cloth that side. Okay. So, uh, definitely suppose this is 2 and this is 12, this is suppose 2 and this is suppose 12. Okay. So, definitely okay. so, 2 units of cloth and 12 units of wine that is the Portugal. right? So, I can tell this is the Portugal's production possibility set and this is England's production possibility set production possibility frontier, England's production possibility frontier. right? So, so long they are not engaged into trade, how much they can consume England society and Portugal society? Definitely, Portugal can consume any point is bounded by this triangular kind of area, red color triangular area in our any point within that right portugal can consume and england can consume any point bounded by this green color triangular area right if they each of those countries want to be self sufficient okay whatever wine and whatever cloth we need to sustain okay we are completely producing within our domestically within our country okay so definitely red color any point within this red triangular area uh, Portugal can consume okay? and England any point within this uh, green triangular area England can consume. right? Now, suppose they are not uh, their objective is not to be self sufficient rather try to consume more. Okay? So, definitely look suppose since Portugal has absolute advantage in wine production over England and England has absolute advantage in cloth production over Portugal. So, Adam Smith's principle of absolute advantage tells you or advises us that country should specialize in that production where it has absolute advantage. So, as per Adam Smith's uh, principle of absolute advantage, Portugal should specialize in wine production and England should specialize in cloth production and they should then exchange these two commodities among themselves through trade. Okay. So, in that way given the entire resources how much Portugal can produce. So, Portugal is producing Portugal is producing 12 units of wine unit wine. Okay. And England is producing 12 unit of cloth, right? 
and suppose with this so I am Portugal I have 12 units of wine you are England ok you have 12 units of cloth and we are because I am specialized right I specialized in only wine production. So, I can produce only 12 units of wine ok you specialized in cloth production. So, you can produce only 12 units of cloth right now suppose we we decided that we will engage into trade we will exchange these two commodities among ourselves with the trade ratio say for the instant 1 is to 1. 1 is to 1 trade ratio by this what we are referring? We are referring that for every units of I will give 1 unit of wine to you in return of that I will get 1 unit of cloth. So, 1 is to 1 it is basically if I if I sell 6 units of wine to you I will get 6 units of cloth in return from you right. So, if we use this 1 is to 1 trade ratio and suppose Portugal has 12 units of wine out of that it will consume 6 units of wine and remaining 6 units of wine it will give to the England in return of that it can get 6 units of cloth from England because trade ratio is 1 is to 1. So, Portugal can consume this point 6 6 in this this uh, two dimensional framework. So, look at here if Portugal can produce wine and cloth both domestically 6 6 point is what? So, suppose this is 12. So, this is 6 somewhere and this is 6. So, 6 6 point is somewhere here this point 6 6 means what? 6 units of wine and 6 units of cloth right here. So, this point uh, beyond the production possibility frontier for both the countries. Okay. Neither England can consume this point nor Portugal can consume this point if they want to produce both the commodities domestically within themselves right because if Portugal wants to produce 1 units of wine uh, 12 units of wine or 2 units of cloth right. So, if Portugal produce allocates its resources accordingly such that it can produce 6 units of wine then it can get only 1 unit of cloth. So, 6 vis a vis 1 this point Portugal can consume if it can produce wine and cloth domestically. Similarly, exactly the same way 6 1 this point England can consume or it can produce if England wants to consume 6 units of cloth and remaining uh, resources for the wine ok. Look at here this 6 6 point this point is 6 6 this point is 6 1 this point is 1 6 this 1 6 means 1 unit of wine and 6 units of cloth 6 1 means 6 units of wine 1 unit of cloth 6 6 means 6 unit of wine and 6 units of cloth. Look at here the kind of example we have taken right if each of them want to be self sufficient whatever commodities we, we assume that it is a very primitive kind of day and only two commodities for our understanding sake of our understanding we assume only two commodities wine and cloth and with those two commodities they have to sustain ok. So, if the message of this uh, how trade can make each party better of what kind of message we are getting if each of these two countries the kind of numbers we have taken using that numbers we can see that each if each of them wants to be self sufficient wants to produce both the commodities it needs to uh, sustain domestically right it can only consume very low less amount of both the commodities ok. Alternatively if it follows or both of them follows that principle of absolute advantage as proposed by Adam Smith following that principle of absolute advantage each country should specialize in that production that commodity production where it has uh, absolute advantage. The kind of example we have taken Portugal has absolute advantage in wine production and England has absolute advantage in cloth production. So, England should uh, specialize only in production of cloth Portugal should specialize only in production of wine and then they should engage into trade. And by that picture and by that discussion we can see that 6 6 people uh, 6 6 point means 6 units of wine and 6 units of cloth each of them consume they can consume if they specialize into one commodity production and engage into trade. So, this 6 6 this point 6 6 
this is becoming or uh, this is a part of consumption possibility although it is not a uh, within the production possibility of neither of the countries ok. So, that means what that means if they engage into trade if vis a vis if the, they do not engage into trade if they do not engage into trade whatever they can consume if they engage into trade they can consume larger things and when you are consuming more your standard of living is uh, better than earlier right. So, this with this example or this or on the basis of uh, principle of absolute advantage we can successfully demonstrate that how trade can make each party better off ok. So, that is our principle number 5 we will, so uh, we will continue uh, this principle number 5 discussion in our next lecture. Uh, there we will introduce another principle called principle of relative advantage or principle of comparative advantage that is given by another uh, seminal economist called David Ricardo, David Ricardo ok. In any case we will continue that in our next lecture, take care.